In this short video, I'd like to show you how quick and easy it is, even expensive too, to set up a merchant server running in the cloud on an IAS cloud service. In this example, I'm going to use Google Cloud Platform. I could equally well have used Amazon Web Services or Microsoft Azure or another cloud service, but I just happen to have already um, uh, an account with Google Cloud platform, so that's what I'm going to use. Uh, but it could equally well be done on any other platform. Uh, so I've already gone to the cloud.google.com website, and you can see I've actually logged in. I have a Google account logged in virtually all the time anyway. Um, and you can see here, as we go down, looking at the various different components that they offer, uh, you can see the various different major platforms. Uh, for example, App Engine, which is an platform as a service uh, cloud product, uh, which allows you to run specially developed applications uh, written in PHP, Python, Java, Go, or JavaScript um, uh, on the Google uh, platform. But they have to be specifically written applications rather than off-the-shelf generic web server applications. By contrast, Google Compute Engine is actually uh, an infrastructure as a service uh, model, uh, and it provides you with a range of different platforms, as we'll see. Um, so, uh, you can also see here there's, there's columns for storage services like Cloud Data Store, which is a NoSQL uh, object oriented uh, database, uh, Cloud SQL, which is in fact MySQL, uh, Cloud Bigtable, which is a Hadoop like uh, database for large uh, big data applications, as well as other services like Cloud Pub Sub, which actually is a uh, message-oriented middleware uh, platform. I will discuss uh, middleware, uh, particularly message-oriented middleware, a little later uh, in the unit. So if we pick on, for example, uh, Compute Engine, uh, you'll see uh, a description of Compute Engine, uh, how it works, pricing, documentation, uh, etc. Now, one of the nice features of Compute Engine is its launcher, which allows you to launch virtual machines, which are pre configured as images that actually are set up with a particular target operating system platform uh, and maybe application as well, uh, all pre configured in the image. So, if we go to launcher here, uh, it will gradually build the page. You can see here the various different kinds of software packages and platforms that you can launch in a virtual machine uh, on Google Compute Engine. Uh, so they range from uh, just simple operating systems like Ubuntu, for example, uh, through things like databases, um, content management systems, uh, Sugar CRM, which is a customer relationship management platform, Drupal, which is a CMS, and if we scroll down a bit further, you'll see here things like ah, Magento, which actually is a merchant server platform. Uh, you can see they've also got PrestaShop here as well. Uh, these are actually both images provided by a company called Bitnami. Uh, they actually provide these images, which can be booted up in uh, the uh, compute engine. So if I click on Magento, uh, you'll see that actually it is uh, going to run for about $4.49 per month, that's US dollars. Uh, it's actually running in a single virtual machine, actually it's a fraction of virtual machine as you'll see. Um, relatively inexpensive. The pricing for this kind of cloud service actually includes a charge for the actual running of your virtual machine, which you can see here is an F1 micro instance, you know, $4 per month, plus disk storage usage, uh, which is um, 40 cents per month for a 10 gigabyte standard persistent uh, disk uh, as the system runs. So let's go ahead and actually launch this on the Google Cloud Platform. Now because I'm already logged in, it's going to ask me which particular uh, project I want to associate this virtual machine with. I'll stick it in with my website, which actually runs on uh, Compute Engine. And now it's asking us to go ahead and create uh, the instance. It's suggesting a name of Magento 1. Where is it running? Which zone? 
you can see here, this one's already suggesting that it runs in US Central 1F. We could equally well uh, choose um, Asia East, A, B, or C, which actually is in Taiwan, or we could host it in Europe if we wanted to, whichever is closest uh, to your users generally. Um, an F1 micro uh, machine type is a fraction of a single CPU with 0.6 gigabytes of RAM. Now you can change that to other options uh, like for example an N1 Standard 1 which is a complete virtual CPU uh, with just shy of 4 gigabytes of memory which is much more suitable for larger applications or somewhere between the two you've got the G1 small which is one virtual CPU and a bit shy of 2 gigabytes of memory. In this case they're suggesting F1 Micro uh, and let's just leave it at that because the, the larger the machine we use the more it charges uh, and in fact an N1 uh, standard machine type would cost you around about $25 per month. The boot disk is suggesting obviously the Magento image from, Magen from the Bitnami launchpad. Uh, we can go ahead and configure other options for management, uh, disks, networking and access and security. One of the options I'm going to choose here uh, under access and security is to put my particular SSH key in there. We already have my SSH key uh, actually in a notepad plus plus window so I'll just copy that, go back down here and just paste the whole thing in. You can see it's picked up my username from that uh, and it's got the actual key value so we'll leave that as it's set. We can also set up other user information, API access, does have access to the BigQuery APIs, Cloud SQL APIs, and so on and so forth. In practice, it's simple just to leave all of those at the default values. And now we can go ahead and create that. Okay, You have to agree to all the terms of service, etc. And we'll click on Create. Interestingly enough, you can actually do all of this from a RESTful API, if you're doing a lot of it, or there's actually a Google uh, Cloud Console uh, or shell which you can use to actually do these things from the command line. I'm actually using this uh, browser interface because it's the easiest thing to capture and display. Now as you can see it's now deploying this Magento, Magento instance. Um, it may take a few minutes, it's actually building a disk image in a Google data center in the US somewhere. It then has to, after building the image, it has to run various scripts to configure it uh, in various ways, set up the IP address, the username and password, and other stuff that has to be configured uh, the first time it's actually deployed. Um, and of course, it then has to actually boot that VM, the virtual machine. So it's, it's actually running by the time that we actually come to start using it. Uh, so it's going through all of that right now. You can see that the uh, the companies that actually built this uh, have actually created a slightly customized uh, form at this point that's got options to allow us to uh, find out the username that's set by default, the default password, uh, and also log into as a button for logging into the Magento admin panel. So as I speak, it's grinding away, um, actually building the instance and booting it up and then customizing it by running some scripts at boot time uh, to actually set those uh, different parameters uh, in the virtual machine. I'm actually running this, by the way, on a free trial at this point in time. I mean, my actual website now has been deployed there. It's been running for a couple of months now. But uh, Google give you 90 days free trial or $300 worth, whichever expires first to experiment and play around with uh, Google uh, Compute Engine or App Engine. So um, uh, that's what I'm using at the moment. Eventually, uh, I'll have to give it my credit card details and start paying uh, for my web server, etc. Incidentally, they do say that they're quite happy for students to actually sign up for Google Cloud Services. But to do so, you have to provide a credit card However, you get this 90 days or $300 of free access, uh, uh, which you can use to tinker around and experiment and play with things. When the 90 days are up, they then 
do not proceed to automatically fill your credit card. They ask you if you want to proceed or even just shut your account down. So you can, if you want to, uh, go ahead and use this during Comp 344, um, but I can't require it since it does require credit card details for you to sign up in the first place, even though you won't actually get billed um, unless you choose to go beyond the 90 day uh, period. So it looks like it's getting towards the end of the uh, VM deployment at this point. The progress bar is getting quite close to the end. A few seconds more should see it finished. At that point, it will tell us the IP address uh, for the site, um, as well as its username, uh, default password it's set up in Magento for the admin account, and some other information. Must be very close now. I must admit, the last time I did this, I went away and actually made a coffee and came back and it finished. So here it is. You can see it's given us a site address of http colon slash slash 146.148.41.250 in this case. Um, this is simply a temporary or transient IP address. It's not permanent and can't be used uh, for purposes of DNS lookup. It's enough to get us, uh, us going. And you can see that that's obviously the site front page. If I click on this, you can see it's connecting, waiting, and it should very shortly load the Magento homepage. So there it is. It's a blank Magento homepage with the kinds of things you'd expect to see in an empty e-commerce merchant site. But if we look at the admin address, you see that's index.php slash admin. We're going to log in with the username user <coughs> and the password P6WAQYDY. <coughs> In fact, I'll just simply highlight that, copy it so I have to type it in when I log in. And if I now click on that link, here's our login panel. We're logging in as user, press control V to paste in the password and log in. It's quite usual for the first time you log into these kinds of systems to do a bit of setup and require a few seconds. And you can see it's already given us an incoming message saying you got to change the default phone numbers and other information before you actually launch your site and make it public. <coughs> Excuse me. But given that there's nothing in there in the first place, that's really a bit of a redundant message. You can see that as we've logged in uh, to the admin panel, it's given us by default a dashboard that shows you know, the current sales position, the average value of each order, size of the last five orders, what's your best selling products, most viewed products, new customers, uh, amounts shown in dollars, etc uh, etc et we would want now to go to system my account probably and change for example the username and password that we're using to log in you don't want the random the allocated one necessarily so you want to put in your own name here and change the password and also go to the main configuration So you can see here, uh, under general configuration, we've got country options. You want to change this to Australia, fairly obviously. So you just scroll back up through here, change that to Australia. What countries would you allow for uh, shipping to, for example? What's the EU countries? States required for, state not displayed and required for other countries. What time zone is it in? And again, we would scroll very quickly through here to get to Australia. In this case, we'll choose Australia, Sydney. Choose English, Australia. Leave the weekend and first day of the week information okay. Over here, we might also go to, for example, 
We'll save this photo any further. We start also to do things like currency setup. So under currency options, we'd say that the base currency has to be obviously Australian dollar. The default display currency we'll use would be also Australian dollar. And we need to make sure that the Australian dollar is added by pressing control and click uh, in the list of allowed currencies. So now we're using both Australian dollar and also US dollars as allowed currencies on the site. We'll talk more about currency handling a little bit later on uh, in Comp 344. So obviously we're going to go down through this list and set up all the various options uh, for the store. Uh, and then we have to go through setting up the catalog, managing products, categories, attributes of individual products, customer information, setting up promotions, etc., etc., etc. Meanwhile, over here uh, on Google, outside this, uh, we might want to actually go to uh, the console. So I click on my console. And then here we can see I've got various different projects running. If we go to Compute Engine VM Instances, you'll see here I've got various instances. Instance 1 is the main one I'm running. Magento 1 is the one I've just created. Smilebar is another one that I use for test purposes. And you can see the various IP addresses, etc. If I want to SSH into the site, Okay, you can see it's transferring SSH keys down uh, from this terminal to the uh, the server. And it's going to log me in, and here I am logged into this machine called Magento One, which actually is the instance name. Uh, it's running on Debian Linux. You can see there because we have the usual login information, and then a bit of Bitnami Magento information. And I can go ahead and do whatever it is I want to do at the command line uh, on this particular server. Uh, so you've got the ability to work uh, either through a console for your Magento server uh, or you can actually work uh, managing the instance from the um, outside using the Google Developers Console or you can SSH into it uh, and actually give command line commands if that's what you're used to. So it's a matter of just about 10 minutes at the outside to actually deploy a merchant server. Then you have to start actually building the site, which involves quite a lot of reading up on Magento, for example. If you look at the Magento user guide, you'll see it's about 1,000 pages of documentation. So it's quite a lot to get your head around in actually setting up uh, the merchant server and populating it with all of your catalog information, customizing it with shipping information, taxes, payment processing, etc., etc. Nonetheless, if you want to actually set up a store, it's one of the quickest, easiest, and cheapest ways to do it.